Hello everybody and welcome back and we've got some new development news coming out from the World of Warships development blog and the first thing has to do with Alaska. So they have made some additional improvements to Alaska. Now as I said in my last Alaska video, I like the way she was already as is. Now she did have a few weaknesses but you know I was okay with those. Um, I remember uh, Little White Mouse, she liked the Alaska as she was as well. And anything we got after that would be a bonus. And it seems like we've gotten those, right? So they have improved the rudder shift. Her rudder is now even faster, which is good. She is more cruiser than battleship. So having a fast rudder is going to help her be able to do a bit of kiting. She's also had her detection improved. It was 16.2 base, then it's 15.5 now. And so that is going to make the ship that little bit more stealthy which definitely helps her, right? Because one of the weaknesses of Alaska in the initial iteration was the fact that her concealment just wasn't all that great. Um, but now this is going to make her a little bit more stealthy, a little bit able to get in and out of trouble. Detection when firing from smoke is reduced. Okay, that's not really a huge change just because you're not really taking these kinds of ships into smoke and smoke firing from them, so that's not really a big change. Two other changes, and these are, I think, also quite substantial. One of them is her turret rotation speed has increased. Um, her turrets were definitely a little bit on the slow side. But again, just by playing carefully, you could overcome that um, just by, you know, pre-rotating your guns to the right positions, planning your movements in advance. But this is definitely going to help just, you know, for those last-minute things where you want those turrets to traverse a little bit faster. Her firing angles have been improved. So, yay, this is good because... Originally, one of the issues with Alaska is that when she wanted to bring all of her guns out, she did have to show a little bit more broadside than it would have been, let's say, safe to do so, considering, you know, she does have armor that is better than your standard cruiser, but definitely worse than your battleships, so it was kind of like there. did make her vulnerable to some battleships. This should help because if you increase it, then you can bring out more of your guns, your belt is going to be better angled, better chances of auto balance, better chances of resisting penetrations, um, increased chances of shatter shells, etc. So these are all really good changes that will make the ship, I would think, pretty darn good when she finally comes out. But it also tells me, judging by the fact that they haven't really adjusted anything else, that the ship is getting pretty close to being finalized. One final change, and this is the small nerf that you have to, I guess, sacrifice for all those buffs, is that they're going to make the fire duration on the Alaska, as well as ships like Stalingrad and Kronstadt, from 30 to 45 seconds. This is a perfectly reasonable change. Um, in fact, I was kind of wondering why we didn't have this at the outset. But we have it now. So, you know, all in all, Alaska looks like she's going to be pretty darn good when she comes out and I'm definitely looking to playing her in this finalized state because these changes to me definitely look like she is getting into that finalized point. Next up we have some additional news with regards to La Terrible and the battleship Jean Bart. So first things first let's just go over Jean Bart because that's the really simple one. Still a bit too powerful and so the, what they're doing is they're reducing the Sigma from 2.0 down to 1.9. Um, another small change a slight sigma reduction from 2.0 down to 1.9. So again, possibly what it's suggesting is that you know overall where the performance was after the last big batch of changes, the ship is now performing closer to where they want her to be, but still a little bit too much at times, right? Maybe a little bit too much when she does you know pop that uh, main battery reload booster. Her guns are still outputting a little bit too much damage, so it's making it slightly less. Uh, accurate. So, you know, maybe that's their thinking, right? Okay, but La Terrible was the case where here's a destroyer that when I played her, like, yeah, she wasn't great, right? But she was fun. She was a fun little destroyer, really, really fast. That main battery reload booster was kind of ridiculous. You could really burst down some destroyers really quickly. Hell, even some cruisers if they decide to give you broadside. But all in all, her gun arcs were just a bit on that awkward side. You couldn't always get them on target. And when you didn't really have that main battery reload booster, your guns, well, still sufficient at setting fires and doing some things, did feel a little bit slow. So it looks like Wargaming is 
addressing that issue, right? So some of the things that they're doing, they're reducing the reload time of the main battery guns from seven to six seconds, so that's good. They've increased the range from 11.24 to 12.27, so she's definitely gonna have more of that gunboat role. I think they're kind of going more towards what the current Khabarovsk is like, which is, you know, sort of um, out there, fast destroyer, maybe a good flanker, and just good harasser all around. Turret rotation speed, again, is increased, right, from 7 to 10 degrees a second. Firing angles have been improved, so, you know, those awkward fire angles, because the original version when I played her, uh, the rear turret arcs were just really awkward at times. Okay, torpedoes are... Uh, you'll take a look at the torpedoes. See what they've done? They've, they've cut the range. So now these torpedoes are not as easy to use as they were before. A kilometer range is still okay. I mean, considering that if you were, let's say, firing your torpedoes while you're treating and then there's somebody chasing you, a kilometer torpedoes could still work. They're, of course, faster now. So that's good. And they have higher damage. So when they hit, they're going to hurt a little bit more. But the key sort of indication of where they want to go with the ship is that little bit that says they have removed the smoke generator. So by removing a smoke generator, they essentially want to have La Terrible kind of be like Khabarovsk, but down at like tier 8. Um, because you, you'll notice they didn't make any adjustments to the main battery reload booster. They didn't make that change there. They've just simply increased the range, made it so that you have to depend on your speed and your maneuver maneuvering, not maneuverability, sorry, your maneuvering in order to avoid fire. That seems to be where they're going with this. Um, but again, 12.27 kilometer range, if you get AFT, you're definitely going to be able to make that harassment feel not so nice. And do remember, the ship does come with 139 millimeter guns, which actually had decent damage and all that. So... Now you have a, a destroyer platform that really can actually put the hurt on ships if it can get onto their flanks, which with its crazy speed is certainly something that it can do. All in all, looking forward definitely to playing the updated version of La Terrible, and I'll probably have a video for her when I actually get the ship and get to try her out. But that definitely looks like a pretty substantial improvement over the version we just played. So looking forward to the new La Terrible. Okay, moving on to the latest news about the UK destroyers. And they had quite a list of changes. Um, so all the researchable destroyers from Tier 6 to Tier 10 now have hydroacoustic search. Now these hydroacoustic search, if you actually look at it carefully, pretty short range, right? Um, three kilometers for ship detection, three kilometers for torpedo detection, this is much more of a defensive hydroacoustic. It's for you to stay safe, um, maybe in your smoke cloud, things like that. So, okay, that's a, that's a change. Nothing really substantial there. But the next one is where we do see changes. Jutland and Daring, the Tier 9, Tier 10 British destroyers. Okay, first things first, improved auto bounce angles on their armor piercing. They basically now have USN heavy cruiser auto bounce angles. And they now have a heal consumable. Now, heal consumable for these destroyers, yeah, I would say that they kind of needed it. Um, they were not the fastest destroyers and weren't the most agile destroyers, so giving them a heal, yeah, I can kind of go with that for now. I mean, of course, we'll have to play them more just to see how it is, but I can definitely understand why they want to go with that change. Um, if you take a look at the number of charges, maximum three charges with superintendent, and they do recover you know, some HP, so all right. The interesting change does seem to be that AP change though, all right? So it seems like perhaps, and I'm gonna say perhaps, cause we're not sure, that perhaps what they're trying to do is make the British destroyers like a miniaturized version of their light cruisers, which is gonna be a focus on sort of AP spam. Uh, not really sure. I mean, we're really gonna have to get these ships back to try this out because just, yeah, this is this is something very, very different than the original version of the ship. So I think for the British destroyers, I'm gonna wait until I get my hands on them, get to play with them before passing additional sort of judgment or analyses about those ships. So yeah, that's pretty much everything that came out on the World of Warships development blog today. Um, if you have any questions about these changes, do leave those thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Aside from all that, folks, take care, have yourselves a good one, and I will talk to all of you again when I get home from work.